Welcome, everyone, to the Omniverse of Nick and Part 17 to What If Daryl Died Instead of Merle. But before we get into today's episode, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to the Omniverse of Nick so you can help me make this channel bigger, better, more storytelling if telative, whatever you want to say, and just honestly help out a ton. And with that, let's get into today's episode where Merle will divulge his plan of what he wants to do regarding Beta and the whole Whisperer and Horde army. So, Merle tells everybody he's got a plan of how to deal with them, but it's going to take a little bit of trust and explanation for them to believe him or want to go along with it. He says this actually brings him back to Woodbury when he thought of a particular instance and pushed it aside. With this plan, it's a lot more in depth since it's way different and he doesn't know how everybody's going to take it. And Jesus says this is an emergency. They have to try anything that might help out in the upcoming Horde Swarm and Whisperer Swarm with Beta and whoever else, or whatever else. And Merle's like, okay. And he begins to explain. He says that, true, they should and could stick it out, like I have done in a multitude of other stories, and just kill them that way and be ready for them. But that could also leave them open without knowing what's going on. So Merle is thinking of a distraction. Silence. No one knows what to say. Until Lydia speaks up. And she says, it won't work. Because Beta is not going to come in here all, you know like, guns blazing or just stupid or not know what he's doing, he'll be coming for a vengeance. And a distraction is not going to get them off Hilltop's case. But Merle says he's not finished. So, he says that for said distraction, he's not thinking of just blowing up an area and then attracting walkers and whatever else to there and then they fire or like going away from Hilltop and engaging them that way Merle's got something else that he's thinking about he's thinking why don't we go to them first but only one one person is the distraction and that one person needs to convince the whisperers that they're the Alpha, that they killed Alpha, and they're willing to join and everything. And still there's silence. And Rick says, he'll do it. And everybody is just like, what? Really? After all that? But Rick says, truly, it's got to be him. Plus the fact that he admits that Merle has almost stepped up too much. Not that he's got a problem with that, but he says it's about time that he stepped up as the original leader and actually, you know, did something as big as this without even Merle explaining the full story. And Merle smirks at this and says that this actually is very poetic now because it brings him back to that thought that he had in Woodbury when he was just explaining and that there's way more to this plan than Rick might think. The distraction mainly is to convince Beta and the Whisperers that that guy, who whoever goes, which now will be Rick, is the Alpha by doing something drastic to prove the point fully, because they won't just take it with Alpha's gun and just take it like that. It needs to be deep. And Rick is very confused at this, because, like, how does this portray to him or anyone else? Well, to another person, it would have been different. But with him, it's very poetic, 
because it brings him back to that moment, which he keeps referencing, by the way, and something that he had been thinking about at Woodbury when it came to him first becoming leader and being around Rick. And then he slowly just avoids speaking and gazes down at Rick's hand. And then all the lights begin to click up on there. Now everybody knows what Merle is talking about. And they cannot believe what they've just heard and seen. And this actually makes Rick angry. And he asks Merle, You, you were planning to cut off my arm? As some sort of what? A revenge? Against what I did to you? After all this? But Merle tells Rick to hold on a second, and even Michonne and a few others want answers now, and tell Merle he better start talking, and fast. And Merle's like, well, the cat's out of the bag now. And Merle begins to explain that, because I already explained this to you guys, but when he was becoming the leader first, and he saw Rick and Michonne together, at one point his mind was going across just going over there, slapping Michonne out of the way and possibly killing her like he thought he would or whatever and cut off Rick's hand like Rick made Merle do. But then he remembered his brother Daryl, how much he's changed and how much Merle himself has changed too and becoming a leader and how better of a person him, Rick, and everyone were and are, which is why he didn't do it. But for this situation, he's not telling Rick to do this because he wants it to happen. He's telling Rick to do this because Rick volunteered and it's ultimately what might have to happen just to prove to Beta, just for the plan to work. And Merle says, are you still up for it, Officer Friendly? Because I honestly half did and didn't expect you to volunteer for this. But it's poetic irony. But Rick says he'll still do it. While a lot of Rick would be completely infuriated that Merle had those thoughts back then and it was right under his nose, he thanks Merle for not going against those thoughts and becoming the leader that he became. They effortlessly destroyed the saviors and made Alpha and the Whispers here look like jokes. And their town and everything they have, they wouldn't have that without Merle. They'd probably have way less. And they did. But Rick says that, yeah, he'll do it. But he really had to think about it before he made a decision. Because honestly, he didn't expect the plan to be this in depth. Merle has become very smart, and he was a soldier, to be fair. So Merle would definitely think along these lines. And Michonne, since they're obviously together, tells Rick that he shouldn't have to cut off his arm and do all this for this, even if Merle's plan is good, without even hearing the rest of Merle's plan, because he still hasn't finished explaining. And Rick says, if it has to happen this way, it has to happen this way. Rick is the one who volunteered, and because Merle just had to have that one thought, it has to happen like this. And this could have happened to anyone. And Merle says that they don't have to worry about, like, Rick dying or bleeding out or the plan not being able to be followed through or anything, if that's what Michonne and everyone else is worried about. Because Merle's thought of everything, just in case Rick did volunteer to this and this is right after a bit of the events of alpha and hilltop mind you merle still has his knife hand as a spare for when he switched to the sword hand and says to rick he's kept it along ever since because who knows there might be more people who lose a hand one day and rick is unfortunately going to be that guy and after smearing himself in blood to make it more you know believable, Merle says, don't put the knife hand or cut your hand off until you reach Alpha's camp or at least 
find, you know, the direction in which is in from how Lydia and Francis can more or less explain it. Take Alpha's shotgun and make it very compelling so we can prepare for when you and them get here. So Rick takes off a shotgun, bids adieu to everybody, and with that, he makes his way towards the direction of Alpha's camp to, you know, hopefully get them on his side, become the quote-unquote Alpha, and the rest is history from Merle and them's perspective. And everyone tells him to be dead careful. Meanwhile, Beta and the other whisperers of the army have grown increasingly impatient and worried because Alpha and the men that they were, that she was with, have not returned. And Beta is ready to engage wherever the communities are because he knew about it too. But then he sees something in the distance. More so, someone. Soon enough, Rick and Beta make and meet contact. And Rick says, Alpha and her men are dead. Beta unsheathes his knives and prepares to fight and kill Rick because he should have known that's why Alpha and them didn't return. This man must be the one responsible at all those communities. He must be the leader. And Rick says, before Beta or anyone else does something they regret, Rick did not come here just to admit it and sacrifice himself. He has come here because he's sworn to be the new Alpha and to lead the Whisperers. He is the one who killed Alpha and he wishes to be named the next Alpha and lead the Whisperers against the communities. He did this to prove himself and to get rid of an inferior Alpha. But Beta doesn't believe a word of this. Of course, because he didn't believe Negan either. But Rick just devilishly smiles at Beta, knowing in his eyes, without Beta barely saying a word, that he doesn't believe him. And tells Beta, you want me to prove it? And gets an axe out and prepares to chop off his hand. But he can't yet, because remember... He couldn't cut off Carl's hand, and it took forever for him to muster up the courage to cut off his hand and the ones who live. And Beta? This takes him by surprise. Not only has this man just peered out of nowhere, claims he killed Alpha, has her shotgun, and is literally trying to be the new Alpha, but he's ready to cut off his hand to prove it. But then Beta smirks when he sees that Rick is struggling to do it. But then in a devilish, ultimate roar of might, Rick slices his hand off. And he begins to bleed out profusely and is feeling very, very, very much in pain because, you know, anyone would if they got their hand freaking sliced off. And yeah, Beta, he is going to be very much taken aback by this because he actually did it. But then it goes away again because he sees that Rick is obviously going to bleed out. And so this whole alpha thing and him coming here was just a fool's errand. But that's before Rick, in a very much test of his own strength and will, pulls out the knife hand and slaps it on with every bit of his might. So it stops the bleeding and it more or less just slightly drips out of the knife hand. Rick has to push with all of his might to do all this. And with that, he yells out to Beta and all the whisperers, believe me now, I am your alpha. So either accept me or deny me. Either way, you won't have a true leader if you don't trust me or accept me. Beta's very angry at this show of anger and roaring might, but now he says, what do you do now that you're the Alpha if we really accept you? Rick says, now they will obey him. They will tell him everything about the army and the horde that they possess and the rules that Alpha did while she was Alpha. Then, after that, Maybe he'll tell him 
and the rest of the Whisper group about a little bit more about himself. Then they engage the communities that were a starting and pretty much ending point for Alpha's death and his lead into coming here. If they do that and play by both sides of the agreement, then everything should be good. Beta, he really still doesn't believe Rick, but honestly, with no Alpha, no other evidence, and everything that Rick just did and demonstrated, they don't really have another choice. So, it's what they can do for now. Meanwhile, at Hilltop, everybody is getting prepared. Bombs are set everywhere, including inside the walls, and Merle orders everyone to get every gun, grenade, rocket launcher, and melee weapon, sword, everything that they can, including Michonne and any other blacksmith, forging as many as they can for what's going to arrive and basically just to prepare. I don't really need to say anything else. That's what they need to do. And Merle is like, they won't last a second once they see what we have. And with that, Rick begins to get into the fold very harshly of the Whisperer tradition and the army and the horde and everything there, with much force from his part to keep the Whisperers in line with his new role. But Gamma, as well as Beta, see something in Rick that's off. Something like he's hiding something. But Rick, Rick just pushes these notions aside because of course he knows that they're going to be suspicious. After all, this is his plan. So he's obviously going to know that they're not going to trust him. But he still holds head tight and demands to know more about the Horde and everything involving, including how to get it to the communities and so on. Basically all the specifics. Beta's like... We still don't trust you, especially some of the higher-ups of what's left of the Whisper Army. How do we not know that this isn't some kind of elaborate trick and you're just playing a fool's air and doing all this just to prove some kind of foolish game? Rick just yells at this point in Beta's face, saying, Have I not proved myself enough? I have your leader's gun. And blood all over my face, including chopping off my own arm, and all this to prove that I am worthy of being your new leader. What more have I to prove? Or do your thick, wrapped minds not comprehend this because of what your old leader did? And Beta is very angry at this because of how much he was close to Alpha. But even Beta can recognize a valid point. So, honestly, he has no choice but to comply to Rick, even if he and Gamma are still skeptical. So, Rick, after learning everything else about the Whisperers, and Rick even telling a little bit about himself, the Horde is shown to him of thousands of walkers. And after everything is said and explained and shown to him, the Horde, the Whisperer army, himself and Beta, all traverse and travel to the Hilltop Colony to begin the reign and revenge of the Whisperers. And once Hilltop Colony and even Merle sees the Horde and the army, this actually scares and terrifies Merle. He has never seen something this big. And Rick and Beta are at the head of it all with Rick staring up at the top of Hilltop Colony from the distance, because they aren't that far, but they still are a little bit far from the main part of the colony, and knows that this is where the plan all takes into fold. He steps ahead of all the Whisperers and the army, and with a flick of turning around, aims his gun, or Alpha's gun, barely turning around and prepares to just one-off shoot Beta, and that would be the signal for everyone else to fire. But Beta already knew that Rick was lying about something, that he would do something, and throws his knife in that instant, 
which scares Rick and makes him drop the shotgun. But luckily, Beta's knife connects with Rick's knife hand in a split-second reaction from Rick. So, Rick does not get stabbed or hurt by Beta's blade. Neither does Beta get shot because of Rick dropping the shotgun by accident out of fear. But now Beta gets both of his knives, quickly reclaiming both of them after Rick throws Beta's knife back at him, which Beta ducks from, catches in a split second and grabs both of them and prepares to rush Rick. But in that moment, he is stabbed straight in the back by another knife from Gamma, who knew that Rick was hiding something also, and even though her influence from Alpha was big, she tells Rick that the reason she's doing this is because her nephew and Francis are at the Hilltop Colony, so she knows that Rick was not only fighting for them and that they were somehow still alive, but that he was fighting for all of them, and she can understand that. So, she is doing this distraction even if she dies for them and him. And Rick definitely respects and understands this, and knew at least that Gamma wasn't all bad, that they were pretty much all misunderstood, and Beto definitely was too far gone, but knows that this is his only chance, and runs and books it straight towards the hilltop and yells at the top of his lungs for everyone to fire their weapons. And Merle relays the message again and tells everyone to fire at the top of his lungs and bullets rain down. Bullets, grenades, everything you can imagine rain down from the hilltop colony. Arrows, it doesn't matter. Beta, in an act of desperation, shoves Gamma straight into the Horde and the Whisperer army and there is no way that Gamma is surviving this. Absolutely not. And she is quickly devoured. And Beta knows that this is going to be his only chance to escape because he, everything is dying around him. He's got to get out of there. Andrea tries to take a shot at Beta, seeing him in the Horde and the army, knowing that he is the biggest threat out of them all and knowing what she knows about Beta from what all of them have been told. But even after she tries taking a few shots, she can barely see Beta and knows that he's not dead and relays the message that... This is the biggest threat in the Horde and the army from what they were told, and she doesn't know if she got him successfully or not. But Merle just smirks at this and says, no use crying over spilled milk. They gotta get rid of the rest of the army and the Horde before worrying about one person, even if he is big and the biggest threat. So they continue to rain down bullets, arrows, grenades, and launchers until every remnant of the Horde and army is nothing but guts and dead bodies everywhere. But even after all that, Andrea is still unsatisfied because she knows that Beta is not dead. He got away because she saw a big figure running from the chaos and knows that he has to be alive. And this actually definitely upsets Merle because he knows that a big threat like that can't go away. And Lydia knows that Beta is not so easily dealt with. Beta was the best besides her mother and knows that if he's going away or trying to get away, he won't go back to the camp or try to mount an attack again. He'll go for one of their towns or a specific place from where Merle and them came from, depending on what Rick told them and what went on, what he knows about them. And everyone's eyes, including Rick's, go wide with fear and panic. Woodbury. That's the only logical assumption. And Rick is utterly overcome with dread and sorrow and regret. Because while he was there, part of what he told a few of the lower whisperers was that some of them came from Woodbury and he told them a little, a little about it because he didn't think it would matter. They'd all die anyway. Beta must have overheard. And Lydia says that was a big mistake. Now, Beta will most likely go there and kill whoever is there and will either get whisperers or walkers to devour that town 
and turn the remnants of that town into his new personal horde. But he won't stop there. Any town or remnant of that town or near there, he will turn into a huger horde and will come back for them. And Merle is like, we can't let that happen. He worked way too hard. I'm talking way too hard to make that town what it is today. Seven years of hard work that he made as the leader. They have to find Beta and kill him now. So every remnant of Hilltop and every kingdom and community spreads out. And the search and chase for Beta is on. But will they find him? Will Beta reach Woodbury? Will he find a horde? What about the other communities and places that haven't been discovered? And if he does find the town, will his plan succeed? Or will he be stopped in the nick of time? Find out next time in this terrifyingly great twist. You guys didn't think this was the end of the video, did you? Well, the Omniverse of Nick has a new feature. A sneak peek at what's next to arrive.